Here is the reason why the F-22 Raptor can kill anything in the sky. With Russia and China deploying advanced new fighters and surface-to-air missiles SAM, the task of gaining and maintaining air superiority over an increasingly more lethal battle space falls to a small and elite group of U.S. Air Force pilots flying the mighty Lockheed Martin F-22 Raptor. Conceived during the waning years of the Cold War, the stealthy, high-flying, supersonically cruising Raptor was designed to defeat the most fearsome weapons the Soviet Union could hurl at the United States and NATO during the Third World War in Europe. However, with the end of the Cold War and the subsequent 1991 collapse of the Soviet Union, the F-22 was left without a mission, or so it was thought. Indeed, the second Bush and Obama administrations cancelled the F-22 program in 2008 after only 195 aircraft, 187 production planes, were ordered because they made the assumption that high-end state-on-state -state conflicts were a relic of the past. However, as it is becoming increasingly apparent, they were wrong. Indeed, even after the collapse of the Soviet Union, Russia protected the best of its military-industrial capabilities as much as it could during the economic and social meltdown of the 1990s. Despite its severe problems, Russia managed to develop and field advanced weapon systems such as the Su-35S Flanker E, S-300V4, and S-400, among others. Meanwhile, a rising China modernized its forces in earnest, developing new fighters and new SAM systems such as the formidable J-16 and HQ-9. Thus, while Washington took its eyes off potential challengers to focus on the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, leaders in Beijing and Moscow continued to modernize their militaries to keep American forces at bay in the event of a future conflict. The Raptor is the only operational combat aircraft that the United States operates that Washington can rely on to take on and defeat advanced air defenses such as the Panzer S-1, S-300V4, and S-400 that Moscow has dispatched to Syria. Moreover, it is the only aircraft in the U.S. Air Force inventory that possesses a huge performance overmatch against late-generation Russian fighters such as the Su-30SM Flanker H and Su-35S Flanker E, both of which the Kremlin has also deployed to the region. But while it is important to have the right tools, more important is the human dimension. Pilots and maintainers must be trained and ready to defeat the highest end threats if they are to be sent into combat. Indeed, one of the problems for the F-22 is to generate enough targets and a tough enough threat so that pilots get some useful training. Another problem is that the jet is so capable in terms of its sheer speed, acceleration, stealth, sensors, and maneuverability, it actually compensates for tactical errors. It makes up for a lot of shortcomings on the pilot side. You can have a really bad day and the airplane will still do phenomenally well. Just because you win the fight doesn't mean you did well. Just because you lost doesn't mean you screwed up. We build scenarios to track that. So, there are times when guys will die in training when they did everything right, and there are other times dudes are screwing up left and right and they're completely successful. But in this airplane, it is much easier to survive. In order to train pilots for the exercise, the first fighter wing uses a combination of T-38 trainers and other F-22s to act as red air, replicating advanced flanker level threats. Meanwhile, the F-22's onboard computers and data links replicate enemy surface-to-air threats such as the S-300V4 and S-400. Because the jet is so capable and the pilots are the elite of the elite, the red air has to effectively overwhelm the Raptors with sheer numbers. Described one scenario where four F-22's took on 10 fourth-gen enemy aircraft, similar to a Su-35, simultaneously and which regenerate or come back to life. A big upgrade and something needed. One recent addition to the Raptors at Langley is the new Block 3.2a Update 5 software. At long last, the new upgrade adds the Raytheon AIM 9X Sidewinder High Off Boresight Missile, something long coveted by the F-22 community. The addition of the AIM 9X is a huge improvement for the Raptor, all of the pilots at First Fighter Wing that I spoke to told me. The addition of the new weapon greatly increases the F-22's already formidable lethality. 
That's even though Upgrade 5 is an interim capability. The AIM-9X and the Raytheon AIM-120D AMRAAM missiles will be fully integrated onto the Raptor with the Increment 3.2B upgrade, which has yet to be fielded. The one thing that the F-22 is still lacking is a helmet-mounted queuing system HMCS, that would be used to exploit the outer edges of the AIM-9X's capabilities. It's a feature that is common on most US fighter aircraft and most foreign ones. The lack of such a system would normally place the Raptor at a severe disadvantage in a dogfight if the aircraft didn't perform as well as it does. The Air Force is still planning on adding such a helmet-mounted queuing system to the F-22, but pilots at the first fighter wing say that it is not an absolute necessity. The Raptor can usually dominate a fight even without such a system. Indeed, as Fessler noted, even without the AIM-9X or an HMCS, F-22 pilots often close into gun range and ambush other jets in visual range. Ultimately, as the US Air Force's only dedicated fifth-generation air superiority fighter in an increasingly hostile world, where the threat grows more challenging every day, it is in the service's best interest to ensure the Raptor remains as capable as possible. Right now, the Air Force is slated to equip the F-22 with a helmet-mounted sight by 2020, but similar efforts have fallen prey to budget cuts in the past.